right, so let's base the gear. Gear in her hub. There's a washer there. How's that thing look? This is the new stuff over here. Okay, then there's going to be some. And all that stuff works. I have to read the book. There's some little roll pins. I remember now. They kind of. I don't remember what those roll pins actually do. I guess they just kind of keep the needle bearing where it's supposed to be. So, use a shaft protector. Blah blah blah. Remove the needle bearing. Okay. Well, it tells you. Remove the gear. Okay. That's what we, what we just did. Remove the needle bearing. Doesn't say anything about those little roll pins right there. Not one word about them. There's a little roll pin right here. So tell me how you're supposed to remove the needle bearing if you can't get the roll pin. So, okay. Let me see if I can get that out of there. It obviously has to come out because the roll, the needle bearing is not going to come over it. Okay. Oh shoot! Clumsy. I don't think the needle bearings come in this kit either. I don't think. Maybe they do. Oh yeah, there's some needle bearings in there. We'll save them just in case. Usually the needle bearings don't go bad anyway. We got to really keep track of that little roll pin right there. Okay. Then there's another washer. This thing's got washers all over it. Seems to be different than the last one I did. I don't remember this. Okay, now I see the purpose of that washer there. That keeps that roll pin, or that, or that roll pin. I see the purpose of that one. That orientates that. There's a square notch in that thrust washer, and it keeps it orientated right. Okay, well that makes sense. So what do we do now? I'm thinking we probably pull the snap ring out of the clutch drum and start pulling the frictions and steels out of it, which I'll show you what's wrong with those. All the tangs are busted off on the... Uh, Boy, somebody was pretty hard on this old girl, I'll tell you that. That like acting like it's stuck in there. That uh huh. That's kinda weird. There it goes. It's gonna come easy on this old girl, is it? The way this thing's been beat on, it's just amazing that anything works on it at all. Yeah, they're all stuck together in there. There we go. disc is stuck to the pressure plate. Yeah, we've got a ridge or something worn into that clutch drum. It's not wanting to come out of there, that pressure plate. Okay. Tapper tapper and beat it out of there. Yeah, 
that shouldn't do that. Like that. Okay, so they got two steels on the very end. Okay, so I mean the frictions actually look pretty good, but see what what's going on here? How they've busted all the they've busted all of the tangs off on the steels. That is abuse. I mean that is severe abuse. There's a bunch more that are busted off on that one. God, I can't believe how many of these are broke off. How how do how do people just just tear so much stuff up and just Crazy, crazy, crazy. That is the clutch piston actually right there, I believe. So, yeah, this roll pin here has to come out of there. And then we have to recompress this. What's actually holding that in there? No way that roll pin's holding that in there, but I don't see a snap. Oh, there's the snap ring. I see it's kind of recessed in there. The snap ring's kind of recessed in there. We're going to have to get this out of there. Okay. Where's my other little roll pin at? Keep track of those. All right, I guess I'll go ahead and tear the other side apart. I'm about to mix things up. We're going to get all this thing stripped down and get the shaft cleaned up. All that good stuff before we put it back together. All right, this has got three different seal rings on it. Which these can be a real pain to get off sometimes. There's a snap ring right here. Sometimes you can pinch them and roll them with your hand and they'll kind of come apart on you. Sometimes they won't. Got that off. Usually these don't come off too bad. I mean, I can get, get a bearing spreader, but sometimes you can just go like this on each side. And just pop them off of there. just way quicker than messing around with the bearing spreader and doing all that. And of course you're gonna have that spacer here. Kind of the same setup as the other one. Oh okay now I see what the roll pin's for. There's the other spacer. Okay on the other one. So that roll pin go there needle bearings but you're not going to get that needle bearing out of there until you pull that roll pin out of there it appears that they, all these needle bearings on this shaft are all pretty much identical of course we're going to have another washer down here we can go ahead and pop our snap ring off of there. This side of the clutch pack doesn't seem to be near as damaged as the other side. 
everything the snap ring comes out easier well the clutch you know, that's coming out easier you can definitely tell which direction they were abusing it in See what kind of clutch stack up we got here on this one. Big thick pressure plate there on the end. Let's just see if we can get them all rolled out of there at once. Maybe. Most of them anyway. see a little bit of evidence here these might be a little bit burnt on this side see a little discoloration there well, maybe not it did get hot because it's blued it's been blued it got hot enough and yeah, they've been slipping a little bit here you can tell yeah they get pretty hot Some of these guys try to use these darn back hose as a loader, <laughs> you know, like a big loader or a dozer and shoving some of the dirt they shove with it. And it just, they're not really made for that. All right. So, next thing to do, let's pull this other thrust washer off, another roll pin out of here. Okay, so now what I gotta do guys is basically go over there and I've got a piece of pipe and I'm just gonna put it in there and I'll compress the spring, pop that out, and we'll have to take a little bit of air, put in the in the ports here and pop the pistons out of it and we'll see what the seals look like on them. Alright guys, I had to take my gloves off. I couldn't roll these you know these split rings. You gotta when you put them in there. You gotta basically hold what I did is took a screwdriver and pinched the one side and then basically you gotta roll it around to where the two halves overlap. I can show you a little better on here if you don't know what I'm talking about, but this style of seal, kinda like you see on a lot of automatic transmissions. You know, it's got the two little hooks on it that overlap and latch into each other. So I got the two new seals, the two new pistons. Basically now what I gotta do is return spring. On each one go put them back in the press press them down put the snap rings on um, let's go ahead and just throw the pistons in it real quick go I'll probably just do one at a time because I know my luck I'll put both of them in there and then I'll flop it over to do the other side and the one will fall out and break one of the ceiling rings so it's pretty I'm not really going to show that it's pretty straightforward I mean it's these snap rings on these can be kind of a challenge there's just no there's no surface area I mean I spent a good probably 10 minutes getting each snap ring out there's just a little bitty and they recess into the groove so far to where there's just a small portion of the snap ring sticking out and you just can't get on them. And basically what I had to do was spread it enough and then I got a pair of really small needle nose pliers and I got it like this and then I just pulled it around. I just kept pulling the snap ring around until it popped clear out of the groove. So it'll be a lot easier going on with them. You basically just got to slide it over the shaft and then slide the snap ring in and compress it and then slide the snap ring down over the shaft until it pops in the groove. 
Okay, so we got both of the clutch pistons to turn the strings back in. Now let's put a roll pin in. Now we'll orientate that that uh, dust washer. Make sure I'm yeah, I'm in the right spot. I need those little needle nose pliers where I can get in there and See, it looks like one end might be spread a little more. Yeah, let's go put the narrow end in there. That's what's going on. Well, that's not good. That just popped and flew out of there somewhere. So we're probably not going to find that again. Uh, I have a whole assortment of roll pins. I'm probably going to have to cut one off now to make one work. Oh, you dirty little son of a gun. No doubt those are in the kit. They are not in the kit, so that kind of sucks. I was just trying to get it started in the hole, and then I could tap it in. Maybe that's what my idea was, but... Not being very cooperative. Good grief, that is not very much fun. Kind of a pain in the butt. And it doesn't line up with one of these holes the way the shaft's orientated to the drum. To kind of get it started and put a punch and just knock it in. And we'll just keep on going. I might have smashed them a little too much with my other pliers. But they're not really round anymore. Uh, is there any way I can get my hammer in there and kind of tap it in? It's kind of a pain in the ass, actually. I did a Carrero transmission for a guy named Glenn Barrett out in Poe Valley. Or not Poe Valley, Lando Valley. And I don't remember doing this. This must have been a little bit different or something. Yeah, you're not going to get a hammer in there. I got it kind of started right there. All right. All right. Okay, remember that thrust washer's got a square notch. It's gonna go against that, okay. And then we got new needle bearings, I believe. I don't know. Definitely not that one. Okay. I gotta get some, you know what, I've got some ATF in here. will work just fine to prelude these needle bearings. And actually put a little bit of ATF on on that and pre-lube that thrust washer a little bit. Let me find my other new needle bearing. Okay. All right, guys. So I got these friction soaking. Now this, I was on actually the wrong service manual. I was on a 580 Super M because I got to looking at it, and the clutch stack up wasn't making sense. 
they were telling you there's supposed to be seven seven friction seven steels and i'm sitting there counting both forward and reverse clutch pack and there was because i remember pulling them apart i had up against the pressure plate there were two uh two steels stacked against the pressure plate so i said well that ain't right so then i went back through all my service manuals on my external hard drive and found the uh, correct service manual for the 580 super l so the carrero and the 580 super l is a little different from the carrero and the 580 super m all right so what you want to do here let's start out with a steel We'll see if this makes any sense by the time I get there. I'm going to have six friction. They tell you to stack them up against the gear because there's a special tool that puts it all together and puts this all down on there. And we're not going to do that because we don't have the special tool. Two of each in there right now. Four of each in there. Stack two steels. So there should be eight of these steels in there. One, six, seven, eight, and six frictions. And then your pressure plate. Pressure plate's kind of tight in there. And she's just a tight fit. Okay, this is our gear. We're just going to Try to get all our discs lined up. Uh, get this, I gotta get the pressure plate separated back away from the disc. It's got it a little bit too tight. Kind of screwed up there a little bit. Kind of screwed up there a little bit. Shouldn't, shouldn't have put that in there that tight. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep. Maybe I can get them. To, I might be able to get them. There's another way to do this, you know what? But I don't want to hit the wrong one. If I hit the wrong port, I was gonna say I could put a little air to it and shove that shove that thing back out. If I hit the wrong one. We're getting there. Oh, we 
bag. Get back on there. Okay, they're all lined up. Okay, let me look at the book here and see what we got to do next. Okay, I figured out I was looking at the wrong wrong end of the clutch pack. Okay, so what do we do with her? Okay, she snapped in there where she's supposed to be. I'm a little bit OCD about snap rings. Sometimes I just like to just tap them in, make sure they're in there where they need to go. shaft right here these metallic ceiling rings boy you really got to be careful with them you can really screw one up real easily why does that look like it's I'm not really liking that I gotta take a file it's like it's damaged there a little bit that's no good. Let me take a file and clean this groove out a little bit to where that sits in there right. Alright, so what I do is just take your your ceiling ring and take the edge and roll it around. I shouldn't feel any resistance. I could just see it with my naked eye. I don't know if I if I did that when I I didn't pinch it very hard in the vise, but I don't remember ever pinching it there anyway. kind of these things can be kind of a chore to get them right sometimes I just got to take these gloves off to where I can roll that thing with my thumb and roll it in Yeah, the gloves are got to come off. At least one of them. There, I can do it right. No problem with get that darn glove off of there. And same thing, you know, like any other thing you work on, stagger your ring gaps. Make sure all the gaps aren't lined up on it. Come on. Why are you? This one's being a little bit on right here. Why is that thing not?
I don't like the way that thing feels, to be honest with you. I guess it'll be all right. It doesn't really want to rotate in there like I would think it should. It's just tighter than hell on the end down here. I don't like it. All right, so here we go. Six of these. Count for one, two, three, four, five. I put one in there, so it should be six there. Before I put these last two, I really think I got a different, a different approach this time. I wonder, I got an idea, I wonder if it would be easier to go like, take them all out. Let's put the one down in there. Let's try it this way. So that's going to be down like that. Doesn't matter really because there's a friction on each side. But, well, I could pull it back out. So let's go like this. thinking that I could do is just go like this maybe let's go back right there get my finger out of there Too bad, I don't think. Yeah, now they're all lined up. Now, if we just kind of just come straight out with her, like that, put the last two steels in, pressure plate. This time I learned me kind of a lesson don't go as far, just 
just enough to get the snap ring groove to be visible. I don't know why they made that so tight. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? I think she's all the way in, seated up. Okay. Now, put our gear on. Most of our stuff should be lined up. I think I got it all figured out. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, now our roll pin that we had to build. to try to get it started in there which is pretty tough and it's right up against that that's a kind of a Tough deal. Man. I got it. Okay. Make sure it's all the way in. Plus washer. Yeah, oil grooves go down on it. Spacer bearing. I gotta figure out which bearing though. They're saying there's a bearing with a snap ring groove in it. I don't remember anything about that, so yeah, we're trying to get the full drive shaft. Redone here. Oh, come on. Uh, okay, got a vice right here. Don't know why I'm not using it. There we go. Here on the shaft. There goes that one. Let's see if I can find out. Which ones I need in the kit here? Sure, 
there appears to be this one here. Sure going on a lot easier than they come off. Maybe this one here. There ain't much to that shaft. Let me go get the hub that goes over it now. Okay, so this hub. So it's gonna take oil just like anything else. Uh, it's a spring-loaded clutch back. It'll take oil to take it out of full drive. Why are we not going down on there? What are we doing? Lining up, I think. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Okay, so you got, I got transmission rebuild kit comes with a small parts kit. And it'll come with some new springs for the full drive clutch. And then I just dropped one. Darn it. I think I did. Drop one, I thought. Huh, I have six of them. I don't know, I must be imagining things. Okay, so now, now you got to go over and then compress this and put the snap ring on. But it's a lot easier just put it in the press, take a piece of pipe, you know, with a notch cut out and press it down, put the snap ring on, and then there really isn't too much. Too much uh, left uh, for shafts. We got primary, secondary shaft, the input shaft, all put together. So basically, I think we're ready to start putting uh, the shafts and the case halves. Okay. Wish I could do something more than, well, you know, do things like this more often. <laughs> or I could remember. What I'm doing, I think, it's going to go in there like that. Let me see what we got here. Yeah, they tell you to put the bearing in the four-wheel drive shaft in the position in the rear housing. Leave the thrust washer. Use clean transfer to lubricate the thrust washer. So the thrust washer so that the side with the oil grooves is up. Yeah, against the gear. Okay. And I just laid that thrust washer down somewhere. I know it's a mess. It's a mess on the back of the service truck. Life as usual. And the grooves thrust washer go up. What the heck, man? How come that's not fitting in there right? Wait a second. Oh, I think I'm... What am I doing? Dumbass. You dumbass. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the four drive clutch gear so that the lugs are up. We did that. Okay. Connect acceptable lift equipment to the top gear on the secondary shaft. Lift the secondary shaft over the rear of the housing. Engage the shifter forks with the synchronizer as shown. Begin to lower the assembly into the rear housing. So I, I haven't got the shift fork set up yet, so i got to get that set up. Okay. These kind of have to be thrown in as a pair. Okay, input shaft, reverse shaft, I think full drive shaft. There we go. It's a 
it's going into the bearing. So, where is my rubber mallet at? Oh, my finger! Ah! What did I do with that rubber mallet? Something's not right. Something's not right. What the hell's going on? The flush washer might be screwing me up. Okay, so I can get my wire off that I used to lower the secondary shaft in with the crane because secondary and primary kind of got to go in as a pair as well. Okay, now how did I wrap that around here? guys he's all rebuilt lots of new parts in her new charge pump oh <sighs> okay well guys i'm gonna crane her in the service truck and uh i'm gonna run home and see if i can get it in tonight probably won't finish it up till uh, i don't know probably monday or something like that i'll see i'll try to get it in tonight i know to, maybe tomorrow i might be able tomorrow saturday I might be able to get something done on it Saturday. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put that drive back together for that grader and run it up to the pumice mine tomorrow, and then I gotta come back. This piece of shit here, man. This is the project that never goes away. So the oil cooler, I got a gasket a little bit off and didn't get it right, and it leaked, and so I had to pull that back off, which wasn't that big a deal. And I put that back on there, and I poured antifreeze in it, and I started running it, and then the water pump started leaking. So the owner went and picked up a water pump. I think that's the last thing I've got to do, is put the water pump in it, which... Ah, uh, man, do I have to pull that radiator and all that shit back off of there? It really doesn't look very good, does it? Uh, there isn't much clearance there at all. I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll see when we get there. Did I ever tell you how much I hate internationals? Anyways, thanks for watching.